Tommaso De Benetti, I take care of community management for Fermins and other Osmark games. With me today there are uh, Peter Haiba, he is the, um, responsible for the soundtrack of Fermins, and then there is uh, Ari Pulkinen from Ari Tunes, uh, responsible for the sound design. Hello guys and welcome. Hello. Hi there. I would like to hear something about yourself first. Peter, do you want to start? Yeah, hello. Like you said, my name is Peter Haiba. And I've been working on games for 15 years, but music has mainly been a sideline for me. And I started in the demo scene a long, long time ago. And a lot of Finnish people working in the game industry actually have demo scene roots. Okay, uh, Ari, what about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm Ari Pulkinen, just like you said. <laughs> and uh, I'm a composer and sound designer, and I have my own company for almost four years now. I'm specializing in uh, game game sound design and game music composing. And you no, know, I have various games behind me right now, and uh, some of those are Angry Birds. Maybe some guys know that. I've heard about that. Yeah. Uh, do you want yeah. to specify what is the what is sound design? I'm, I'm sure that some people at home don't actually know what what is sound uh, design about. Yeah, this is this is actually not that hard to explain. Uh, sound design uh, for the uh, first thing is the is to make the user experience that um, player experience in the game that the user knows what's happening in the screen, and uh, you know making user interface sounds um, and that so. And the second part is to make uh, uh, sound branding for the game and make characters. To have their own charisma, and, you know, uh, just make everything sound like it's just made for the game. And you know, for Fermin's uh, sound design was soft, and you know, uh, yeah, Fermin's sound sounds vocals are very cute, and you know, it's it's uh, overall a really soft and nice experience. Also, yeah. also, sound design uh, helps players. To, to understand what's going on when they are not actually uh, focusing on, on some specific part of the screen. Or... Yes, of course, and you know, uh, it's important for mobile games that the player knows what's going on, yeah. Okay, uh, Peter, um, I heard that the soundtrack of Fermis has been made using trackers. Do you want to explain uh, uh, what it means? Yeah, tracker music. It dates back to the demo scene days, actually. It may sound like a bit of an old-fashioned choice, but let me explain. Trackers started back in the 80s in the Amiga computer, where the Amiga had four channels that could play samples, and Tracker Music uses those four channels to play musical samples at different pitches and mixes them in real time. And that's how they could make some very impressive sounding music back then, because before that all music's, music was created by using sound chips and they were very beepy, but samples had very realistic sounds like snare drums and gunshots and whatnot and uh, the tracker music was it used a so-called module format the files were actually basically a packages of samples and note data so you could have just one file that contains all the musical instruments and all the notes and then it's played back in real time and for mobile games such as Fermins this allowed us to pack a lot of music into a very small package which is always a benefit for the download size and it also allows layering the music because the music is mixed in real time. It has multiple channels. You can fade out and switch on and off some of those channels. And if you listen carefully, when you activate the physics in Fermins, you can hear an additional layer of music coming in to the game. And that was that was only possible with tracker music for in, in mobile devices. Yeah, that's hardcore, man. Ari, uh, what was the goal uh, with the sound design of Fermins? What did you want? The players to feel about the, the levels and, and the characters and what was going on on the screen. Yeah, for me the most important part, the sound design was to make Fermin's sound happy and you know easy to play, easy to pick up and you know not annoying and you know soft sounding overall experience with uh, not too funny noises but uh, cute maybe. Fermin's are really okay. cute. Did you have a specific target in mind or player? I wanted to create a sound design that kids enjoy and adults enjoy. 
you know, if a kid's playing in the, you know, living room, <laughs> you know, the adults are not annoyed by it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, too cute is something like saccharine cute, like strawberry shortcake. You didn't want to go there, did you? Fermin is a bit, little bit less cute, but still a very, very cuddly. Okay, uh, Peter, you're known also for uh, your great work on the Bejeweled series, and I think that has been uh, um, something really good for for your career. Uh, how that work has influenced Fermin's, if uh, it has influenced it at all? Um, it, it's a long, interesting story. Back then, when Bejeweled, the first Bejeweled game was being made, um, I wasn't even looking for any jobs uh, as a game musician, but I had my songs online. And the PopCap people, it was a very small company back then, just three people. Uh, Jason Kapalka sent me an email asking that he, he said that he liked the tracker song I had on my page and asked if he could buy it for their Bejeweled game. And I said, why not? And I sold it to them for a few hundred dollars. And uh, then the game sold like millions. And I was thinking maybe I should have asked for royalties. But you, you needed more like a George Lucas uh, royalty uh, plan, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it would have been possible. But anyway, it, the game was very popular. So it was a great promotion for me anyway. And because they liked the style of the first song, I thought that Visual 2 should have a very similar style. But anyhow, the Bejeweled game is very quite different from uh, Fermin's, mostly in the sense that it's not really that cute. So for Fermin's, I just wanted to do something more cheerful. Okay, here ends uh, part one of this interview. Next week, you will hear the second and last part. <laughs>